So the idea was, can we, can we do a father-son project, spend some time together, we'll put some resources toward, towards it, and sometimes two guys in a garage change the world, and sometimes it happens to be a, a father yeah. and a son. Well, what we call it is a four-rotor circumferential flux permanent magnet motor. Mm -hmm. It's a made-up term that describes it fairly well. Wow, right. If you look at our, our diagrams on the website, you'll see that circumferentially the flux mm -hmm. surrounds it. Okay, that, and that's the, that's the major difference. We also, as you can see here, you can see the four rotors that are involved. Side rotors, inner rotor, outer rotor. We, we, we go from an old timey windmill right. power generation solution for Africa and end up as, as one of the executives from one of these companies told me, they believe that this motor will be in every electric vehicle in the world. Today we're here at the University of Texas in Dallas. Uh, we're at what is called the Renewable Energy and Vehicular Technology Lab. And um, we're here today to test one of our new prototypes. This is uh, the HET prototype, codename Atlas. Uh, this is an 87 kilowatt motor. And what you see here is a dyno, uh, which, which the goal, the purpose of a dyno is a 180 kilowatt dyno um, is to measure the performance of an electric motor. Um, and we believe this motor is, has twice the torque density of any motor on the market. When you compare it for this size and all the other same variables that are in this motor, um, we're gonna be twice the torque of anything on the marketplace. It's got a value proposition for almost every mo motor market application that we've seen. The more we explore it, the more we see. The fact that we can uh, field weaken using D-axis current without using D-axis current injection by turning magnets. It has so many cost benefits that I think Brad is correct, it will be the motor of the world. Most big ideas, most big game-changing innovations don't come out of the GEs of the world or the IBMs of the world. They, they just don't. They come out of startups. They come out of guys in a garage who, who have a our lifetime learners who have a curiosity, who are tinkerers, and a lot of times come from a background that's not even from the space we're working on. Mm -hmm.